Hey everybody, I'm Jared from the Meeple Mentor YouTube channel and you're tuned in to our podcast called Mentor Minutes and I'm here with my buddy Jay. Hey. And uh, I also wanted to shout out that uh, we recently had uh, uh, had some game designers on our uh, podcast. Uh, and so you'll be hearing that. That's uh, We got to talk to the designers of Hibernation and another game called Tailmore. Hibernation's on Kickstarter uh, currently, and Tailmore is hitting it very soon. So you'll have to check out both of those. They're really great. We got a good chance to play them. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of those games? They're both really interesting. One's, you know, an abstract, um, but uh, a neat spin uh, with, you know, bees. And uh, the other one is uh, a really cool uh, game that uses some technology like on your phone with QR codes. So very uh, unique. Both stuff. neat games. Yeah, uh, I liked it. And Hibernation also is uh, a lot of compared to Othello, but yep. also has some more um, strategies and special tile like special mm. abilities that he threw in there as well. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty cool. Um, neat games. Looking forward to that. So I hope you guys enjoy those interviews. Uh, we had a lot of fun making it and play testing those prototypes. Yeah, absolutely. And a quick shout out to uh, Mr. Meeple. Hey. I'm um, wearing one of the t-shirts today. This is the Star Wars Meeple uh, t-shirt. <laughs> and uh, love these shirts. If you want to get a lot of awesome board game themed shirts, check out Mr. Meeple. So if you're not watching the video, it's basically a black shirt with kind of like a gray sort of uh, Death Star looking outline of um, a Meeple. Yeah, and it's got some like, TIE Fighters. In yeah, there. it's got some like TIE Fighters hanging down below, almost like spiders. Hanging yeah. from the Death Star. It's pretty yeah. cool. Mixes two of my favorite genres. So spiders, board games and Star Wars. Spiders and... and <laughs> nope. Spiders and Death Stars. No. Spiders and Death Stars? <laughs> Anything that has spiders and Death Stars. Yeah. I'm always <laughs> up for that. <laughs> That's why Marvel movies are great. There's always those giants. Death. Anyway, all right, moving on. Moving on. This is a board game podcast. Did you know that? We're going to talk about it board is, games. It absolutely is. Um, because of that, today we're doing another top 10 list. And what are we going to talk about today? Yeah, so this is going to be an interesting list uh, because this is top 10 great games that we don't like or okay. that we don't want to play. So really. Is this an overrated list? It's not an overrated list. I think these are games that we both feel are really great games and that we would actually recommend to other people. Or understand why or, people like it. Or understand it. why people really like it, or uh, certain groups might really like it. Or maybe we liked it at one point. Yes, that's And true. maybe no longer want to play cool, it. Maybe or cooled on it a little bit. Don't like it anymore. Yeah, yeah. So these are not games that we would ever ask to play, although they are, we think they're still good games. On some of these on my list, I, I, can be, I, I would be happy to play. Mm -hmm. Some of them I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I, um, I think mine's a little bit of a mixed bag, too, yeah. like that. Yeah, because... Um, and as far as the way, like I ordered my list, I think I ordered them by the ones like the, at the top of the list that are probably the most well-known or mm. maybe most, you know, renowned okay. type games. Um, cause it was hard for me to kind of pick the order because it I, is I, hard. Yeah. I You're looking at two different, yeah. um, you know, uh, categories here. Yeah. Like, I didn't, I didn't want to really rank them based rank on it like, by how my, great it is or by, rank it by how much like you don't like it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So. So I said, let's just, let's just go with the order that I think would be probably the more recognizable, you mm -hmm. know, or more acclaimed games at the top. Well, and, uh, I didn't do that. And see, okay, so we're gonna have some interesting. <laughs> Our interesting list is list. gonna be completely <laughs> off the wall then, because okay. it's not gonna exactly match. So your so your number one is the one you least would like to play, right? Where my number one is the one that I think is the most popular and well known game on my list. That that's the way I ranked it. Sure. Yeah. So anyway, well, so take that into account as yeah. we go all over our list. And that's probably why these are going to vary widely. Yeah. Uh, and I'm very curious if we're going to have any overlaps here. <laughs> I think we may. Yeah. We, th there's probably going to be a few, but we'll see. Maybe we'll one see. or two. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited to hear about it. I know you guys are. So uh, without further ado, let's yeah. look at our number 10. Let's get started. Number 10. My number 10 pick is a game that I played um, quite a while ago before really getting into the hobby a lot. Mm. Um, and it's a card game, uh, by Richard Garfield, Magic the Gathering. Oh, wow. Okay. I know. Wow. This is, a, so it's a great game. Yeah. And I played it to death, like huh. for like a year and a half, I played it four or five times mm. a week, mm. like hard. Okay. I know I probably lost like half our viewership right now because <laughs> magic is hugely important and powerful and strong and amazing and a great game. Yes, I agree. Yeah. It is awesome. And like I said, I played it many, many, many times uh, over a long period. 
And then I realized, you know what, this is costing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And it's basically all I started thinking about because of what they call the meta game yeah, and where you're yeah. constantly looking up or trying to think about combos that you can build to build a deck. And while it's fun, it costs so much money to do that and costs so much time. Hmm. And I, I just had to step back and say, you know what, hmm. I can't do that. Um, and so by walking away from that, I was able to like play more varied board games uh, to where so, I'm at so you, now. You broke the cycle of I magic. I broke the and cycle. It can happen. <laughs> it can you happen. You can do it too, folks. You can do it. There's Call hope. 999. <laughs> it's like AA for magic players. Uh, um, wow. So it's on my list. Mm. It's very low on my list because, again, the way I organize this, that I would still play it, okay. but I wouldn't play it like I did. Like I wouldn't yeah, yeah. find a group of only magic players and build new decks that are, mm. you know, uh, type two decks and all that stuff. I wouldn't do that. But if someone was like, hey, um, I have some pre-built decks that are, you know, pretty fun. Do you want to sit down and play it? Sure. I would play it, mm -hmm. especially if that there were people that haven't played Magic before, because I think it's so influential and so important to you know current gaming yeah. even today. Yeah, definitely. Um, that I would still play it, and that's why it's my number ten, um, Magic: The Gathering. Interesting. Please, please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna do ten? Like, did you want to add me? Nah, I, I, no, I think you said it all. And the <laughs> things I haven't played Magic, okay. so I can't really comment on too much. So. All right. So what's your number 10? So my hopefully, number... Hopefully it won't be yeah, something it's, that it's, everyone's going to... It's gonna... not that epic, I'll say <laughs> that. <laughs> Freak so, out over. So my number 10 um, is a one of those sort of uh, hidden trader games, um, and it's called Spyfall. Mm. And Spyfall is a, a pretty popular game. It's uh, a game where uh, everybody at the table knows a specific location except for one player, and then they have to describe sort of what the location is like without getting the spy enough information to, to guess mm. the location. I think this is really a brilliant concept. Um, and I think it's a, it's a game that um, is so clever and so smart. And with the exact perfect group of people, it can be great. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's, it's flawed. And for me, I have tried to play this multiple times and it just never went the way I was hoping it would go. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's, it's, it's a game where I think it could be perfect for some people. Um, I think it's got a great concept, but the, the, the way that it's flawed, at least in, for me, is that the locations uh, are all sort of shared on this common um, sort of a piece of paper, in a sense, that you're looking at that shows the locations. And because the locations are you know artistically drawn, People can look at those and then, you know, give clues based on what they're seeing. And that can be a challenge because, uh, you know, if it, you say a hospital, it, there could be so many different roles in a hospital. There could be so many different ways, you know, things that belong in a hospital. So it almost over complicates in, for me, at least that whole that whole situation. So um, I think I, I've heard people that have wonderful times with Spyfall. I bought the first one. I sold it. I bought the second one to try it again, and I sold it. Wow! Uh, and so uh, fix it. And so for me, it's like nope. I, I, I'll just play like you know, Chameleon or Detective uh, Club or something like that does something similar, Interesting. but to me in a much sort of cleaner way. So gotcha. for me, my number ten, Spyfall. All right, that makes sense the way you put it. Yeah. Number nine. Okay, my number nine is a an award winning. I think Spiel des Jahres winning abstract strategy game and that's called quirkle oh yeah and quirkle has mm -hmm. sold like over a million copies uh you can find this game and you know target and all kinds of uh, different areas mm -hmm. and it's a fantastic game that uses these really great wooden components with um blocks that have uh different symbols and different colors mm -hmm. and uh the way to play the game is is you're trying to score points based on lining up a certain amount of different colors or different symbols to score points. And if you get, I think, six of those um, that are also different colors and, and different symbols on the same row, you, it's called a quirkle and you score like bonus points for that. Like, Do you well, have to yell it like Yahtzee? <laughs> yeah, you have to say quirkle, yes. yes. Uh, and this is a really cool abstract game. Um, I've seen this go off so well with other people. But for me personally, it's kind of got that dominoes feel to it a little bit. And as the board keeps on kind of growing and growing and growing, I start to look at the board and just start to like get 
AP, like mm -hmm. really bad, um, to where I'm just looking so hard for different combinations to try to optimize, you know, uh, where to put my pieces that it just tends to sort of start to grind down near the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And it becomes something that sort of stops being fun for me personally. So I think it's a great design. I think it's obviously it's award-winning design in a popular game. And uh, I would actually recommend this to new gamers. I mean, mm -hmm. I absolutely would, but I have zero desire to play it. So if anybody asks me to play this game, I'll, I'll always pass on Quirkle. Yeah. Do you want to play Quirkle just a minute? No, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> just so a, just that, a test. That's my number nine, <laughs> Quirkle. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, before I, I mention my number nine, uh, I did want to mention that uh, uh, something I forgot to say earlier. Um, so the the podcast is uh, available to be rated on BGG oh, now. Okay, right, um, right. There is a uh, something called the Golden Geek Awards going on, mm. and before those are are you know awarded, you can nominate everything, right? Yeah. You can nominate all sorts of games for all these different categories uh, from like the past year, right? New games. Um, but they also do podcast awards. And mm. um, now you can look under that Golden Geek nomination page yeah. uh, on BGG uh, and you can find our podcast, Mentor Minutes, a board gaming podcast, mm -hmm. and nominate it as one of your favorite board gaming podcasts. Yeah, yeah, it'd be so, awesome. Yeah, and, they, and they That's kind of cool. Yeah, it is cool. And, and I think um, they have a policy too where they, they, will, they will not uh, nominate like the same podcast year over year over year. Mm. Um, so they, they really try to give other, you know, content creators a chance to, uh, you know, win that award. And yeah. so, uh, and you can nominate more than one. You can, you can. Um, so if you want to nominate another one, I recommend the game casters. Yeah. Um, absolutely. those guys are great and yeah. a lot of fun and, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So if you want to share some love, go vote for us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and also the YouTube channel of Meeple Mentor, uh, was also uh, recently put on a top 45 best yeah. uh, board game YouTube channels to watch in 2021. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, the, I, I was sent an email about it. Um, the website is Feedspot, um, and it's like a, a Blogspot website. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the article lists 45 board gaming YouTube channels, and ours made the list yeah. somehow. I don't know. Yeah, no. I mean, <laughs> but I, it was very honoring to, to hear that. So... Uh, if you if you're interested, um, I'll try to put a link in the video description if you want to check out that article uh, or rather that list. Yeah. Uh, but it's just kind of cool, you know, to like be on the same list as yeah, some I mean, of top, these really great top fifty is <laughs> quite an accomplishment. You know, yeah, I think I mean, it shows the geez. obviously hard work you put into all the tutorials and uh, all the different content and that's and just obviously, exciting. Yeah, and just and means we're growing really. It, it does, and um, and you know, check it out even if you're you're already you know watching and listening to the podcast. Check it out because you might find some other content creators on that list too that Absolutely. you haven't heard There's of. There's some really good ones there. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that, that's an aside. Um, so moving on, my number nine pick for this list mm -hmm. uh, is a another abstract type of strategy game, also very popular. Um, it's also one that I would recommend for new players. And then I would say move on. It's called Splendor. Okay. Yep. Right. <laughs> um, it's great until you've played like numerous other games yeah uh i feel like once you've played it a couple times or or if you've played other games you'll you'll look back at it at this point and say there's really only like one thing going on here mm -hmm. and there's so many other games that use that and do something interesting with it yeah um and i feel like splendor sort of loses that there's really not a whole lot of theme to attach to the game mm -hmm. um and it's just sort of a lot of exchanging of things using cards and tokens so yeah uh i don't know it's it was fun for a while and I know it's like really popular and it gets reprinted and it's got new themes. There's like the Marvel There's stuff. Marvel one, right. Sure. And so sure. I get it. Yeah. Um, but personally it made my list cause it's just not one I would want to play. I yeah. just don't really and, like and playing I, it. I think most gamers that have been in the hobby a while have, have actually played this game too. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it is immensely popular, but, yeah. uh, but yeah, I can see the whole, you know, being samey and everything else. Right. So. So yeah, that's that's why it. it's on my list. It's great. <laughs> I know it's good, but I don't want to play it. Yep. That's all. So splendor. <laughs> <laughs> number eight. All right, my number eight pick is a kickstarted game, and I don't think you can find it retail. Um, hmm. I did an unboxing for it, trying to narrow down. If you want to make a guess before I say what it is, it's based on a hmm. European city, and it oh. comes with 
Uh, is it a famous city where they sell baguettes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, other sorts of... And, and it has some pretty croissant. famous... It's from pretty famous designers also, right? It does. I think Kiesling might be one and of the And it designers. has a very prominent um, road <laughs> featured, yes. <laughs> yes. featured in the game. It's called Paris. Paris. Yep. Paris <laughs> or Paris. Paris. You know, presentation was great. It mm. looks amazing. The components are super nice. Um, you know, the artwork is there. But I don't think I like playing it. Hmm. You know, um, I, I think... It was underwhelming the first time and playing it two or three more times like after that i was still kind of like you know there's not that much to this hmm. and you know the tiles come out randomly but why do they come out randomly like why not just have them out and I, okay there's some strategy to like the order but they always go to the same spot and hmm. the best strategy is always to like put your money or uh, put you know try to gain the key on the lower ones first and then slowly build up there's not really a point not to do that um, and so everyone's kind of working through the same strategy. And since mm. we're all limited by what tiles come out in that order, everyone's doing the same kind of thing. Mm. Um, and then the, the bonus actions that you do, um, again, you have to do those one, two or three value um, like buildings on those streets to be able to move your bonus token. Um, and I don't know, like there just didn't seem to be a lot of replayability to me. And hmm. the setup time on this was way too long. It looked for, like a lot of components. For what you actually get out of it. Um, you know, you're, you're basically just placing a key and then hmm. drawing a tile, <laughs> maybe paying money, maybe collecting money. That's about it. Yeah. And this, um, <laughs> and this is one because it was, I think it's Kiesling and Kramer yeah. that did this one or Kramer. Um, and this is definitely one I was interested in playing and right. I haven't played it yet. Um, and it's a game brewer game, and yeah, I was excited because good, good you know style. they've made some of my favorites, like mm. Gugong, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, different designer, um, but you know mm. I figure the quality is there, uh, the presentation's there, but I felt like just not a lot of replayability, and the mm. fact that it takes so long to set up, like I didn't even understand why every piece of the board is modular when it not like you don't actually change the arrangement. Oh. Like, it always has to be the same setup, so oh. why not just make it a board so it's easier to set up? Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. That's it's just little things like that that yeah. I feel like, if it's modular, why, why, right? Yeah. yeah, There's no point because there's no variability to it. So so the pearl isn't worth the dive, is what you're saying. Right. I love that saying. I don't know why, but... I, I Sure. <laughs> I'll say yes, <laughs> just to keep moving on. All um, right. So that was it. I know a lot Paris. of people like it. So mm -hmm. I'm saying it's it's probably still great on a lot of people's list. But for me, I didn't really care for it and probably wouldn't play it again. Hey, you know, to each his own, right? right. So that's Paris. How about you? What's your number eight? So my number eight is another award winning game. I think this won the Kenner Spiel de Jaris several years ago. Uh oh, so um, we're going to get some more hate. And it's I believe this is, yeah, this is an Alexander Pfister game. Uh-oh. Isle of Sky. Ooh. And I think Isle of Sky, it has so many things that I love in games. It has blind bidding. It has tile placement. It has bonuses based off tile placement. Mm. Um, it has ways to um, sort of mitigate, you know, what, you, what tiles you need to get. And, <laughs> and it has, it, and it even uses like some of these cool screens, you know, to hide your stuff from the other opponents. Do you remember what year this came out? This was probably at least six, seven years ago, I think, okay. if I had to guess. Um, but uh, I, I think this game, I was excited to play it. I've played it several times, and I thought it was really good, and I think it is really good when I played it those times. But it just, to me, for some reason, f fell flat after like the third time I played it. Um, I think it may just be like mm. I, I don't like the art for one. I, I never liked that kind of art style. Um, I I liked you know uh, games like Carcassonne where you're uh, playing placing tiles, but this one just sort of felt very repetitive because mm. you're always going for whiskey barrels. You're always trying to connect certain land, and although the the achievements for each of the rounds you know change and those are variable. I feel like, okay, okay, I'm getting boats this time. I'm going for sheep this time. Mm. It just kind of felt like every game was sort of the same, even though there was some variability thrown in. Mm. So to somebody who has never played like a blind bidding game and has maybe tried Carcassonne, I would wholeheartedly say, try this game. You know, I think you'll really, really like it. But for me, for some reason, I've just, 
I'm, I'm just done with it. Mm. Um, and I've not, not tried the expansions. I know they tend to add a little more complexity and things like that, but uh, they kind of came out after I was already you know done with the game. Uh, so yeah, uh, so I never happens. even tried any of that. So for me, that's my number eight, Isle of Sky, a great game that I don't really like anymore. <laughs> and that's a shame because, again, Alexander Fister, I've yeah, got quite I, a few of his games. I do. I, I love He's a great. lot of his stuff. Yeah, so um, I don't know what it is about that, but... Uh, man, just didn't quite cut it. Didn't, didn't cut it for me. So, well, all right. Okay. Number seven. Okay, and for my number seven... Um, this is one where I might start get start getting some hate. Okay, yeah. uh, that's, <laughs> maybe this was a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, making this maybe, list. Maybe it was. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, that's why it wasn't our first episode. Let's this put is it that way. this is a party game. Um, oh, you might be safe. And I think it's a fan. It's a really great party game. And I've had cards some, against humanity. No, and I've had some <laughs> fantastic times playing this game. And that's Sheriff of Nottingham. <gasps> okay, now. Sheriff of Nottingham. Shot, yeah, Sheriff of Nottingham wow. is wow. if you have the right crowd of people that really get into the roles, I love I actually love playing this game. But what <laughs> I've realized is it's the people that I love. Like it's 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 hanging out with those people. It could be any mm. game and, and if everybody was like doing British accents <laughs> and you know, <laughs> trying to lie to each other stuff, I would like the game because mm. it's just funny laughing at my friends. But with Sheriff there's a couple things about it that, uh, and this is one that I will play if somebody wants to play it. But I it's actually not, really like this game. Yeah, it's it's not one that I'll like volunteer to play ever. Okay. Here's the things that kind of I guess maybe soured it for me a little bit. Um, and I do own this game, and I and I probably won't sell it either because it's it works so great with new players, you know, yeah. new gamers. Yeah. Um, one is it's it it seems to take a little longer than it should to me. It kind of. It kind of, to me, the sweet spot is like after like two, you know, three, four turns. And then I'm kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm ready for something new. Mm. It can last a little bit long uh, for, for my tastes. Um, I mean, usually you only play so that everyone gets to be sheriff gets once. One, one or two. It, I think it depends on how you play it. Plus yeah. they have an expansion now that, you know, you can get like, what, a fifth or sixth player, I think it is. Yeah, but um, I don't know. It, it usually shouldn't play that long because yeah. it's not meant to. Yeah, for, it, for some reason, my games always tend to go like over an hour. Like, and, and it just... I don't know. I, I kind of like that kind of game I want to be done in maybe 30, 45 minutes. The other thing is at the end of the game, there's quite a lot of scoring, you know, because you're, mm -hmm. it's a little more complex than just a, a simple party game where you're, you know, adding up, you're kind of getting like majorities and different, you know, goods that you're, you're selling and, and have smuggled in and things like that. Um, so that can kind of drag the game down a little bit. I think there's some apps to help with that too. Mm. But again, I, I think it's a great game. I think that with the right, uh crowd it, it could be fantastic but i've just kind of realized that like for me it's not the game it's the people and so um you know i've, I've kind of moved on from sheriff although i'll probably keep it in my collection mm. so that's my number seven sheriff of nottingham i i have a hard time hearing that <laughs> yeah, because I, I really like this game yeah. and i i mean i hear I think you it's great i do think it's a great I, I mean, if you have the right people, then this is the game you want to play. Yeah, but you know, I, I think <laughs> there's other party games like to to me that um, like even even older games like Boulder Dash. Yeah. For some reason, kind of get me that same you know laughing with your friends feeling. Oh, Boulder Dash is going to take longer than the Sheriff. It was, it was for me. I, we never play that game by the rules. We just kind of like play towards exactly the like that game can go on forever. Yeah, yeah. Sheriff has a start and end. It does. It does. Yeah. With Boulder Dash, for me, it's kind of like you stop when everybody's done, ready mm -hmm. to stop. So you, it can be short or long, depending on how fun, much fun you're having. But and I, anyway, I play Sheriff yeah. with the expansion too. So and I recommend yeah. it. Like. And I have the expansion. I, you know, <laughs> it's it's just wow. yeah. Wow. I, I, when I was thinking through my list, this is the one I yeah. thought. Do I? What do I really think of this game? And that's that's where I landed. Man, that's so, unfortunate. Yeah. Yep. So well, I'll make sure to be the one to suggest it at some point when we play together, because <laughs> yeah. I, I want to hear. Just put me in the corner. I want to hear your your British accent. The, yeah, it's not and, that great. And your sheriff. Yeah, picture Vic, Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> in, uh, oh boy, uh, uh, Mary Poppins. <laughs> All right, my number seven pick is a heavy Euro game, and mm. I did not have a good time playing this. And it's a really popular. I, I mean, it, it came out pretty close, uh, pretty recently. Uh, Oh, well, I didn't print out the year, but um, it's called Cooper Island and mm. it's from Capstone Games. Mm. I thought I was going to love this game. Mm. It had everything that I thought I was going to like, you know, kind of like building up your stuff, 
uh, your own little tiles of uh, like landmarks and everything else. Um, but it, you know, I, I'm curious if it's because of that one play that I had and maybe because it was late at night, I don't mm, know, mm, mm. but man, I, I got destroyed so bad and I looked and I was I'd like the whole game. I wasn't really getting the production thing going very well, which you kind of have to be able to uh, build on top of other stacks of um, like landscape mm -hmm. to, uh, tiles. Um, and so it's all kind of like this hex building uh, area. And then you have to advance your ship around the outside island edges to get all these other bonuses. And I just was feeling so much at both of those things. Mm. And at some point I was just like, maybe these kinds of like, tile placing arranging like stacking type of games where it's combined with like a lot of heavy euro mechanisms mm. is just too much for my brain hmm. you know and it's hmm. it's like worker placement to take to start doing actions but the actions you're doing are you know like uh, manipulating these tiles and and moving ships and um it's it's it gets complicated hmm. um, very quickly. But the design is solid. It's just The design is solid, and yeah. I see that there's a really solid game here. Mm -hmm. And maybe if I played it a lot more and I got better at understanding how to really make that strategy work, mm -hmm. maybe I would like it. But, man, it's just easier to say, you know what, that's probably not a game for me. Yeah. yeah. You know? I, I, I was intimidated by this because I heard it was really heavy. Yeah. And um, some of those games... It's just, not intuitive. Yeah, they feel kind of like work for me. And then exactly. it's kind of like... Uh, what, what, why am I playing games for? I don't want to work. Yeah. You know, I want to escape. So, so I mean, for all my yeah. heavy Euro fans, you'll that. probably really like it. Yeah. I mean, it's a really, really solid Euro heavy game, mm. right? Um, but for me, I just felt I wasn't able to really click with it. And, yeah. you know, yeah. there's just too many games that need to be played yeah. for me to really dig deep on one to say, like, how can I really figure this one out yeah. and is that really going to make my enjoyment of the game better i mm. don't know yeah yeah you're right you're right yeah one of my honorable mentions is going to be similar to this okay. uh, for the same reasons so. yeah so yeah. cooper island you made the list yeah the list number six moving on to our number six picks um, I'm going to go old school on this, and I'm sure at some point we'll be talking about some older games that, like Splendor, have uh, mm. a lot of influence or popularity, and maybe at this point we just are done with them. For me, that kind of falls um, into, this game falls into that category, and it's Settlers of Catan, mm. or currently named Catan. Yeah, I wondered if this would be on your list. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and I still own it. I've got um, the original, you know, Settlers of Catan version mm -hmm. before they just changed it to Catan. To Catan, right. Yeah. Um, so for y'all youngins who didn't know that, that's why I always call it Settlers <laughs> of Catan. Um, it's, um, it's so influential, so important to the hobby, so important for Euro gaming in North America, um, being one of the first mm -hmm. or the first to come and really open the doors to uh, Germany's uh, board gaming and more. Um, and, you know, the idea of victory points for a lot of people in America, like that was their first, um, you know, sort of understanding yeah. of what that is. Of what a board game could be. Right. Yeah. So, but <clears throat> man, I've played it so many times at this point hmm. and there's so many other better games at mm. this point as well. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want to play it. And yeah, uh, I revisited it. I played the, um, the USA map edition that's like this huge, I think it's like the USA histories version of Catan. Uh, yeah, there's so, there's yeah, so many Yeah, so you can kind of expand out and then some of the tokens then kind of follow you as people like expand. Hmm. Um, I played that, I think about a year and a half ago was the most recent time of any any Catan. And it was still very like, uh, yeah. it's just not that great. Hmm. I just didn't have a whole lot of fun with it um, overall. It just felt long and tedious. Yeah. Um, and the fact that so much of it depends on your dice rolls. Yes. Ah, man, at this point in gaming, I just, I can't get into a game that takes that long and, def and depends so heavily on luck. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so for me, so heavily, th this, this one did, you know, spoiler did, did not make my list, Okay. but it didn't make my list because although I know like what a monumental game it is into, you know, compared to today, I don't think it's a good game. Mm. You know, I don't think it's a great game anymore. And, sure. and I probably, like, if I was recommending a game to new players, I don't think it would be Catan. Um, yeah. Normally, a new player might have already played it, and then I'll recommend something beyond that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to me, to me, the game is always taking too long, uh, and the dice rolling just 
you can right. really really hose you. Um, I've not played a lot of expansions, but for for me, other than maybe one that's not really Catan, like and the Star funny thing Pharaohs about, or something, right? Maybe yeah, I some kind of that, themed but, version. Yeah, the funny thing Catan, with Catan is people yeah. who actually really like Catan will have a preference and will say, "I won't play base Catan anymore." Yeah, right. They'll Even Catan fans are like, "I only play with these certain expansions yeah, yeah. or only this edition mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff." And that to me just tells me. It's just not as good as it used to yeah, be, right? Yeah. It's not as novel as a game as it once was, yeah. and um, so you know, yeah, I get it. It's it's on my list. I still recognize it as a great game. Um, I uh, I just I just don't want to play it. Yeah, I just don't. Cool. What about you? Uh, so my number six six is a super popular series of games, uh, and this is called. The Exit series. Oh, yeah. And these are the escape uh -huh. room games. Um, escape room in a box. I've, I've played them. They're, there's so many different ones now. Now, aren't um, those like one-time play? They're one-time plays because inside the box, you're going to get get different, um, mostly paper and cardboard pieces that you will end up, in some cases, like ripping up or destroying or it's like an original writing legacy on. Game. So, yeah, it, it's one where, you know, you, you buy the game. It's, you know, 15, 20 bucks. You, you know, you play it for three, four hours and then you're done, you know, because mm. you've escaped the room. Um, and you can't play it again. And you can't play it again. And and I I won't say that I didn't enjoy uh, playing this this series on a couple occasions, but I didn't enjoy, enjoy everything about it. And since I've played some of like the unlock games that use an app and they're a card based system that, you know, you can you can play through and then mm. pa pass along to friends and stuff. Um, I just prefer that se that series, uh, like mm. Unlock and some of the other type of escape room games, it's more so replayable. much more. Um, mm. And for me, the exit games, I mean, pr probably because I'm, I'm just not so smart. <laughs> um, you know, some of them are are pretty challenging. And in some cases, it's like, you know, I can understand like pouring over a puzzle for like maybe 10, 15 minutes and then having to get some hints. But this this game was like, I mean, it took us in some cases like an hour to figure something out, mm. um, even with a few hints, you know, and some things didn't seem intuitive. I don't really like the fact that it also feels very samey in that, yes, the puzzles are different, but ultimately you're like trying to find a specific code. Mm -hmm. And it's always down to the specific kind of code, just like, you know, regular escape, sure. uh, escape room game. And that's so, part of what it is. Yeah. So so if for people who really love escape room games, I would wholeheartedly say go out and buy an exit game you know it's an experience that's like that one you'll never have like this you know if you've not played it but for me personally if i want that experience i'll play like time stories or i'll play yeah. an unlock uh game that's like takes an hour i was gonna ask you thing. how that compares in your mind to time yeah, stories I, I love time stories because I, I love the narrative element and it's not just getting out of a room you're also sort of you know, solving mysteries and, mm -hmm. and you know, a, a watching a story unfold mm -hmm. um, and exploring as well. So for me, um, Exit Series, sorry, but you got to go. <laughs> well, my, that was, what, was my still, number six. Do you still have any? I still have a few, and um, those are ones I'm actually looking to trade right now. Okay. So, or, I, you know, give away to friends. Sure. Well, I don't own any, so. You want, yeah, I got a couple. Is, you it, try. is it soloable? It is soloable. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's... A, one other thing, and I'll be quick, is uh, it's they say you can play like up to six. I would never play these games with the six because so what's the max? Usually, you, I, you? I'd only want three, three, three at, the at the most, because you want to kind of divide and conquer with some puzzles. Um, and when you have like four or more, it just feels like some people are just sitting there watching everybody else like figure stuff out, and they don't have mm. anything to do. Um, so to me, two or two or three is probably ideal. Cool. Yeah. All right. Number five. My number five is a very popular game by a designer that you have already mentioned on your list. In fact, your number 10, Richard Garfield. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Not... And it's not magic. <laughs> it's King of Tokyo. Okay. Yeah. All right. I now, can see that. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I own this game and I probably will not get rid of this game. Yeah. Because like my nephews love this game. My kids love this <laughs> game. It's it's always been a, a a pretty good hit with new players, but and, and and I love the theme. It's like kaiju attacking Tokyo, mm -hmm. you know. And you get to and be the monsters. kaiju. I mean, there's all the elements to a game that I like, but essentially at the end of the day, you're you're playing like Yahtzee, trying to yeah. come up with combos. Yahtzee with and monsters. And you're either attacking other players or you're either trying to get points. 
And yeah, there's some variability with some of the cards and powers, but ultimately, you know, they're still helping you accomplish those other two things. Um, so to me, it, it just feels repetitive. It's not one I'll ever ask to play. Um, I've heard that, uh, you know, the New York edition mm -hmm. adds some, you know, more gamery elements, but ultimately the, it's sort of the core of the game that I'm not, I just don't love anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is one of the first games I bought and, 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 and actually enjoyed when I started it with the hobby, but for, for me now, um, although I think it is a great game, uh, it's all one that I only keep for other people. Mm -hmm. So that is why it's my number five king of tokyo that that's an interesting uh topic as well that maybe we need to explore further on another episode of mm -hmm. like top 10 games that you only keep for other people yeah th yeah that might be an interesting you list. know that, that'll be a crossover <laughs> for this but uh yeah it's, yeah because we probably both have those games yeah I'm there's sure. there's some games i hang on yeah. to and that not just kids games i think this is even groups right. of friends you know sure. that really like games i'll keep yeah so cool. interesting all right my number five pick uh, is another uh, sort of classic, but also modern classic, you might say. Uh, very popular and actually had quite a sales spike this past year. It's called Pandemic. Yeah. Oh. Pandemic. Yeah. Now, uh, there's a lot of different Pandemic games. Uh, yes. A lot. Tons of variety. Yes. I've played several of them. I've played um, Legacy Season 2. Mm -hmm. um, I've played Iberia and the base game. And, you know, so... I've had a lot of different uh, experiences with Pandemic, and through both the Legacy and through my other plays, I've probably logged like 20 plays or mm. more mm. of various Pandemic games, yeah, at yeah. least. I'm, I'm up there too. Think, yeah. <laughs> you know, and a, like a lot of people probably have too. And for me, it's, it's either kind of gotten stale for me, mm -hmm. or the sort of, again, that, that randomness, the, the importance of how random... Um, <sighs> It's the impact, right? Yeah. When yeah. you draw a card and it can kill you or end the game, mm -hmm. I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah. One bad draw. Can one bad you. roll, one bad draw, like those mm -hmm. kinds of things where it's like everything you were working toward has just failed because of random luck. I really don't, don't like. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, the, the legacy games are better, but still frustrating. Hmm. And, and sometimes more frustrating when, you know, you see certain types of, um, uh, you know, rewards that you're trying to get or achievements you're trying to do. And then the card comes out that basically ruins everybody's, you know, game yeah. or causes you to ultimately fail. Hmm. And it's a game that takes a long time. And even if that card doesn't immediately kill you like you'll still play an hour later and you're like you know if that card hadn't showed up then we would have won yeah. like it's that kind of yeah. game yep and it's sure. like man i just mm. it kills the experience to me yeah. um on top of that as a co-op game i think it suffers from uh quarterbacking yeah you know because once one player sort of mathed out what the best option is for everyone's turn I'm just going to go watch TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sure. I'm going to go get that, the food. That could definitely be a problem with this game. That's, and it's that's like, true. why am I even playing this yeah, that's at true. that point, you know? Yep. So. Yeah, or, or you even have one or two people at the table that are kind of, you know, uh, doing all the, making all the decisions and the other yeah. people are just along for the ride. Yeah, and yeah. unfortunately, my very first time playing this, I was really tired and sort of like mm -hmm. on the phone and then coming back to the <laughs> table um, and so it was like a very like weak introduction. And so mm -hmm. I, he kind of breezed through the rules on me. And so my very first experience was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't mm -hmm. really know where I'm supposed to go. I, and then, so everyone was just like, just do this, just do that, just do this. Yeah. And then they'd have a conversation. I'm like, hmm. I'm lost. I'm, I'm kind of out. Cause like, if you lose somebody in that sense, right. What's your incentive to bring them back into the game? Yeah. Like none. Yeah. Because True. If you, if you or one one or two people are sort of like figuring out the best strategy, it doesn't matter what anyone else hmm. thinks. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah, and 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 the thing is, uh, it, you know, even though you had that bad first experience, you yeah. went on to play. Oh, yeah. others, and I did. And even after you sort of got the system and mastered it, you yep. still came up feeling the same way. Yeah. So, so I had yeah, sort of this get that. low to high to low experience yeah. of pandemic. And I think probably a lot of people have high to low or whatever, but mm. I, I, I kind of had that sine wave going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's, I get it. I understand it's a great game and I'll probably, I'd be willing to try some of the newer legacy ones, maybe going back and doing season one mm -hmm. or trying season zero. zero. Yeah. Um, 
but it's not at the top of my list and it's not one I would suggest or buy. Like mm. if someone was saying like, hey, we need another player, I might give it a go. And as long as it's still like interesting, yeah. I'll stick with it. But right. overall, it's not a game that I like. Hmm. So yeah. hey. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> That's that, that's what this list is about, and it's and some of these are going to be surprises. So I know, uh, interesting. I, I feel bad, but you know, I know a lot of people are going to like these games, and I, I got to throw some hate on it. You know, what can hey, I say? What are you going to say, Matt Leacock? Your number's called. <laughs> no. Wow. <laughs> Moving on, guys. He's a fantastic designer. <laughs> number four. Number four pick. So we're getting close to the top of my list, meaning these are games that I'm not liking more and more. Mm, so mm. I'm going to get angrier and angrier, mm. perhaps. Yeah, we're <laughs> I don't know. Here. We're going to see some fisticuffs or something <laughs> happening over here. This is a game that was very popular. It's probably still very popular, coming out with tons of expansions. Uh, it's a family weight game, but also sort of medium. And it's a thematic or themed game with a mm. strong IP uh, that is available at Target called Disney's Villainous. Wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And this is really just a hmm. preference thing because I recognize that like a lot of people like it. And especially if you really like the Disney property and like the idea of like, you know, get to be the villains mm -hmm. and, you know, be subverted by the heroes. That's kind of an interesting idea. And I've played it a couple times, but for me, uh, the game falls short because of preference. And my preference is I don't like take that games or games like I mentioned with Pandemic, where there's like one thing that you're building up, you're building up, you're taking a lot of effort doing stuff, and then one thing like comes in and wrecks it. Yeah, yeah. And that's that, what that happens in Villainous. That. That's absolutely That's true. exactly what happens. Yep. And it's all on the table. People can see like, mm -hmm. oh man, you're doing that, you're doing that, I'm going to target you now. Mm -hmm. I hate that. Plus the game could drag. It does if drag. Everybody's doing that. Yeah. Because then no one's making progress and the game lasts forever. Mm -hmm. And who's having fun? I don't know, because we're all hating on each other the whole time. <laughs> it's like, screw you, screw you, yeah. screw you with this card. And it's like, well, dang, mm. I'm bummed out. And everything I work towards is fruitless. <laughs> and we've been sitting here for an hour. Yeah. Um, so I'd rather just watch a Disney movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and the game has great components. It's sure, sure. awesome artwork. Good production. Um, I actually bought, I bought this with for my kids. Mm -hmm. um, and in games playing that with, you're going to keep for others. Well, pl yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and playing playing with them. Um, you know, I didn't dislike the first play, but I I didn't get a chance. I haven't played it enough to decide whether I think it's yeah. a great game, but not for me, or if uh, right, you know, or if I end up liking it. I, I'm just not sure at this point. Yeah. And I guess, like, I'm still calling it a great game because I know, like, it's a solid, well-built game yeah, mechanically. The design's, the design's um, good. Production-wise, yeah. it's yeah. good. Um, but again, my preference of Take That Games is very slim. I, I don't it's like that many game. Take That Games. Yeah. I and, like them if they're, they're fast. Sure. And this one's just a little too <laughs> long for me to enjoy that type of experience. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's on my great but don't want to play it games. Okay. Makes sense. Send your hate mail and <laughs> <laughs> to Meeple Mentor. App. Oh God! Uh, <laughs> Just put it in the comments. <laughs> That's it. That's what YouTube's for. <laughs> uh, my number four is a very popular game that, for all accounts, I should really love this game. Okay. It has area control, which I love area control. It has um, different uh, like um, player powers and abilities, which I really love in games. Um, it has. Like Scythe and like uh, yeah, Blood Rage. Yeah, and... like all, all those kind of games. It has it has a combat in it as well. Um, it's got great art. And it has a ton of replayability. And that is Small World. Mm. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I don't know what it is. Small World is one of those games I bought, you know, when I first got into gaming. The components are amazing. It's a Days of Wonder game. And I love Days of Wonder games. Um, and I just... I, I just never could get this game to click for some reason. Um, I, I, it's not that I don't think I, I didn't get the game because, you know, when you put your, um, you know, your different factions in decline and stuff like that, like there's some interesting sort of tricky ways of playing that. Right. But for me, it just, I never felt like I really fully um, knew exactly what I needed to do to win, hmm. you know? And, um, and it, it does have air control, but it's, uh, you know, if you don't really know the other factions well or the combinations of the factions and abilities, 
Um, you kind of have to know those uh, pretty well to know how to defend against them. Right. And for me, it was just something where like I had no desire to play this multiple times to get to a place where I was better at it because I just wasn't enjoying the experience. I think it's a great game. I think it's a really neatly designed game um, and, and definitely worth the price of admission for, for many people. Mm -hmm. um, and even try to play on the app, you know, just to try sure. to yeah. you know, get through it. And, and for some reason, uh, it's just not the game for me. I, I don't know what it is. Um, and I love so many other air control games. Um, you know, Ethnos is a game I like too that has a lot of kind of, you know, similar air control uh, mm. feelings to it and card play and things like that. But um, yeah, for me, Small World um, had to make that uh, list because it's, it's good, but just not good for me. So I don't think I'll ever ask to play this game. And if you ask me, I'll probably pass. So <laughs> I that's hear my number four. I get you. Number three. Number three is a super popular game by one of my favorite designers. And it has some of my favorite mechanisms like card drafting, Seven Wonders. Yeah. Seven Wonders is awesome. In, in the way it's designed, the way that you um, are impacted by the players on your left and your right, the way the drafting works so you can kind of estimate what you're going to get. It has some great systems to earn achievements through science or warfare. It has awesome civilization theming. It's got card combos. It has everything on the list that it has I love in, all, in games. I love in games. But, but this one doesn't work for you. I don't know why. I, and the thing is, I Has can't, it ever? It's I mean, never worked for me. You've never liked it. No. No. That's <laughs> I've amazing. Never, I've never liked it. And the thing is, I've I've even done well when I've played this game. Um, I didn't really have uh, you know trouble like understanding it or, or trying to do different achievements and things. I've played it with an expansion or two before. And I just... For some reason, I just l really lose interest in the game. And it just is no fun for me. And... I wish I could. I wish I could explain why I don't like it, mm -hmm. and I don't really know why I don't like it. It's just uninteresting. Did you for, try for any um, like Seven Wonders Duel or? I tried Duel, and I liked Duel better. Okay. I thought it was interesting with the card play. It it wasn't something I would say was fantastic for me, but I wouldn't turn a game of that down. You know, it's a cool two player game. So, but Seven Wonders. No, so, I, by not liking it, but yeah. still rec recognizing it as great, was is this a game that you would recommend to I other would. people? I would. Uh, yeah, I think this is one of those sort of. I, I wouldn't call this a gateway game. I would. I think there's enough going on with this. It's kind of a next step type of game. Right. Um, but if somebody told me they liked Sushi Go, or they liked other drafting games, or they liked you know engine building games, I would absolutely say, hey, you should try Seven Wonders mm -hmm. because I think it's it's such a big hit for so many people. Um, and you can and play it, a lot of people at once. You can, you can. And it, I mean, it, it fits so many things that like I love about games and, and I love Bring Antoine together. Antoine Boza is an awesome designer too. Yes. I love like all his solid, games. Solid, solid games. Uh, but for me, Seven Wonders just, just didn't do it. So it made my number three. Wow. I find that very surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's your uh, number three? Well, my number three, <clears throat> have you ever heard of this game called Scythe? Is Scythe seriously on your list? No. <laughs> oh, okay. I was about to rage quit. <laughs> that's like his favorite game. It, it is. It, yeah, it's, it's my favorite. I think it is my favorite game. Yeah, that's, I really, that's why I said I really that. like it. I'm <laughs> just messing with it. Good. So well you got to watch sir. the video so you can see well his reaction. Done. I almost, there was no table in front of me, but I wanted to flip something. Yeah, he's about to flip out. <laughs> so, no, no, no. That's not my number three. Okay. I, I like Scythe a lot. <laughs> So, so what's your real, <laughs> real number, number three? All right. My real number three is another... Uh, it, it came out last year, I believe. It's a card game. Mm -hmm. And it's called The Crew, The Quest for oh, yeah. Planet Nine. You did not like this game. Didn't like it. You know, <laughs> and I know a lot of people loved it to death. Yeah. And we played it several uh, several times yeah. uh, for quite a while. Uh, and won, it's like, the, won the Kinder Spiel deserves? It won. Deserves, yeah. some, one of the awards. One of, one of those two, yeah. <laughs> one of the awards yep. when it came out. <clears throat> um, we played it at Jay's place yeah. uh, for like an hour, I think. Yeah, you did not like this game. And it, I was just having a terrible time. Mm, mm. Um, and this, this is a pick for me that also falls under the category of villainous, where I recognize that it's a well-made, uh, great game for a lot of people. Mm. It, but 
I am not that target audience. Yeah. It's simply that, you know, games where um, it, it's the take, not the take that, uh, the trick taking mm -hmm. rather. Yeah, you're not, you don't like. I'm not a big fan well. of trick taking. And I don't mm -hmm. know why, because mm -hmm. like I recall like in school um, or, or even like out of school, like on the computer playing hearts or spades mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like, especially like computer class and middle school playing spades, like with all the mm -hmm. <laughs> connected computers in the network. Mm -hmm. um, it was fun, but then again, it was like just killing time. Hmm. And so maybe to me, trick-taking games just feel like a waste of time. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know why. It's just for me, I don't like that mechanism. And so yeah. <clears throat> the, since the crew is only that, to me, it's just hmm. nothing nothing special. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I love trick-taking games. I think, I think the thing with the trick-taking game is if you don't really love that element of trying to read the other player mm. to think about what they have and yeah. try to either compliment or best them or whatever, like if, if that part doesn't intrigue you, then right. yeah, to me, it's like, you're not going to like trick taking at all. Well, cause that yeah. same aspect of like trying to read the other players just is like old maid or go fish mm. and like all mm. these like mm. much lesser games that I played when I was really young and I really didn't, didn't like, like this. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's a little, rubbed you know, off I don't know. Like I, I'm a big fan of poker. You yeah. Know? I was going to ask it. And, yeah. and so it's not just the fact that it's a card game. Mm. Um, but there's also there's also a risk element in poker that isn't in trick taking games, right. you know. Yeah, there is. There's, there's that there's, bluffing there's an and there's bluffing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, I get it. I get it. I mean, I, you know, so there's certain genre, genres that I just never gravitate to. Right. Um. So so even though it's a cooperative version of trick taking, because it's trick taking that core core mechanism, it just pretty much rules appeal. it out for me on yeah. on wanting to play it. I mean, if if it's if everybody else wants to play it and we have to play it, I'll play <laughs> we it. We have to. <laughs> you know, like, I'll play it. We don't want to invite you, Jared. We don't want to have But you just, if you're going to have a whole night of trick-taking games, just yeah, don't call just me. Just don't invite him. Don't <laughs> Please, invite him. <laughs> I'm not going to have a good time. Yeah, so you're not going to come to the trick-taking con with me next month? Okay. I don't think so. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to decline that one. But you're welcome to go and yeah. represent Meeple Mentor. Yeah, I should have I thought this might be on your list because you're right. I, I yeah. think for the same reasons you said, I get entirely why you don't like it. Yeah, I mean, I know and it's 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 great the way it's made, designed well, mm -hmm. preference-wise, how I play games, I just don't like it. Yeah. yeah. And it's not thing against the game itself. Yeah, cuz you'd recommend this to somebody who likes trick Sure, sure. If you like trick taking yeah. games, this is a great yeah. one for you. Yeah. If you don't like, then you're with me not and just Jared. don't play it. That's all Jared. it is. <laughs> one trick pony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh I see what you did there. Yeah, you'll you like that. <laughs> number two all right my number two is going to sound like a broken record because it's another trick-taking game oh yeah and i don't know if you've played this before game. uh you play it in two teams of two people it's a it's a game called teach you oh yeah i i yeah this is one i've been wanting to play actually yeah i have mm, played it i've heard great things about this i have but... watched it played huh so let me put it this way at cons, a lot of the cons I go to, uh, Teach You's played pretty frequently. Mm -hmm. uh, there's mm -hmm. always at least two tables of it going on, and they're kind of the regular Teach You players. Hmm. And so uh, I believe through one or two of their, their game sessions, I, uh, I took my dinner break at the con just like listening and, and trying to understand the game. Mm. And so then later I actually played it two on two, you know, as, as it is. And like you were saying, you have to not only read your opponents, but you have to kind of be on the mm -hmm. same page with your, uh, your partner. Yes. And yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's very much a game that benefits you if the closer you are and the more you've played yeah, with, the uh, same with that person. person. Yes, absolutely. And <clears throat> wow. For a person <laughs> who doesn't like trick taking games, I played like what you would call one round and you do the scoring mm -hmm. and then I'm like, cool, that was fun. Well, let's play something else. And then they were like, no, 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 we're not done. We got to play for, till someone gets a thousand points. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Wow. Okay. I'm like, I just got negative 200. This ain't ever going to happen. This oh, is going to take oh. forever. Huh. huh. And so, you know, I, <laughs> I had a terrible time <laughs> as you might imagine did you did you actually stick it out till you got to the no, no 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 you, no you bowed out quickly? no well part of it was you know i was visiting friends um in charlotte and we didn't have a whole lot of time yeah, to just yeah. play all night so yeah, i think yeah. we all wanted to try it together and 
um, if we liked it, we would finish it. If not, we had plenty of other stuff we'd rather mm. switch to. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, certainly the other guys enjoyed it more than I did, mm -hmm. um, obviously. But yeah. for me, um, you know, just playing through Tichu is like... Because <sighs> it's a, it's a kind of complicated trick taking game. Yeah, for yeah. Too. it's got some it's unique got a lot roles, of different things going on, and, and special circumstance type things. But one of the things that you can do in the game is um, basically make a, a call that you think that you're going to get like, like a, a number of points yeah, or yeah. whatever. Okay, and so you can call it before or after you see a certain number of cards that hmm. you're dealt. Hmm. And so I was like, sure, let's do it. I'm going to call that. We're going to get it. Never do. It didn't happen. Never, ever <laughs> did. And that's partly because I don't really, I'm not very good at trick taking games. Yeah, trick taking just Because if, your, yeah. if I'm looking at it, I'm like, how am I going to know if I'm going to win right, everything? Right, right, right. <laughs> that's just not me. Yeah. So Teach You is a game hmm. that you have it's to be really, really good yeah. at trick taking it's games. On, it, it's kind of a lifestyle game for some is, people, kind of like is. Bridge or something like right. that. Or um, I've, I've Cribbage been, or Go. Yeah, yeah. Or... I've been interested in this one and I definitely will. I think I actually own a copy. I just haven't played it. Yeah. Um, and um, so I, so you haven't put me off from this because I do like trick taking. Right. But um, it takes but a long it might time. Be a long game. It yeah. takes a long time. I won't have to know what I'm getting into here. Right. And <laughs> yeah. So, so that's no. why it's on my list. And I know it, it sounds very similar, but that's yeah. as soon as I saw the uh, thought of the crew and I'm like, I got to put Teach yeah. You on here. Man. Teach You, number two. Number two. Wow. Okay. My number two is a crossover i think our first crossover right uh, yeah we yeah. haven't had any yeah we haven't had any yet and um very same reasons as you uh you said just about everything i was going to say and that is splendor yeah um i, I wondered about yeah that. I, I i will i own a copy of this and i will never sell this game <laughs> i and, don't own a copy of this yeah. <laughs> and i will never buy this game the reason the reason <laughs> is of all the games i've ever introduced to new players Splendor and Azul are the two that people just tend to, to gravitate. I don't know if I've ever had anybody not mm -hmm. like Splendor after I've taught them the game. And I think it's I think it's it's it has great components. Mm -hmm. Those poker chips, there's yeah, obviously something familiar about that for people, and it's a cool component in the game and has a great tactile sound and feel. Mm -hmm. Um it has a a great little engine building system that is like your you know, it's like um, uh, my first engine builder. You know, <laughs> it's 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 really a good system. It's a really simple system, um, and it has just enough going on to where it's not too complex to introduce to, to new players. Mm -hmm. And I've had people like buy this game on Amazon while I've, we're halfway through it. Wow. Um, same with with Azul. But for me, there's so many other engine building games that I would play that I think are s like far superior to this game. Um, this game always feels the same because mm -hmm. the actions are always, always the same. The the victory conditions always the same. Never and, never really changes. And 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 I, there is there's certainly an element of luck, and you know there's some things you can do to mitigate luck. But uh, in some ways, if if somebody else is ahead by like a couple points, um, it's it is hard to catch them unless cards really come out that just match. You know what, what you've you already collected. Um, so, so not not that that's necessarily a problem. Um, like I said, I th I think it's a really well designed game. Um, I actually like this designer's other game better, which is Majesty for the Realm. Um, I think it's a real it's a fast game, and it, I just it to me has a lot more uh, fun with set collecting and things like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but Splendor is like the really popular you know prom queen game, and Majesty is like you know Carrie or something. Is that a good reference, Stephen King? Carrie? I don't know. I'm just gonna make it. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, Majesty has chips too, guys. Try Majesty for the Realm. Uh, but yes, for Splendor, my number two. It's um, you know one of the most popular games there is, but uh, I don't. I don't want to play it. I don't want to play. Can it. we talk about the uh, the eco friendly environmental nature of this game? Sure. Okay, this game comes in a huge box. Uh, yes, it is a big box. For no reason. It's a big box. Why? Yeah, it can, what be, a waste. It can be a quarter of the size. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah you can fit everything in a quarter of the box yeah. and be done. And that includes the chips. Right, the, the actual chips, chips and cards. That's Yeah, you're right. And yet it comes in a, a massive box for what comes in it. Yeah. And I just, ah, oh, I yeah, hate that. Yeah, everything would fit in like a sandwich-sized Ziploc bag. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you could absolutely do that. Yeah. That's true. That's I just true. don't understand. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, I agree. It's a lot of air. <laughs> Uh-huh. Yep. Honorable mentions. 
Okay. Let's talk about our honorable mentions before we discuss our number one pick for this list. Yeah. Um, I have two to mention. Yep, I have three. Okay, uh, why don't you go first? Yeah, so um, the one that I kind of mentioned or referenced earlier that is a, a really heavy game, and I think it's a brilliant design because I, I, I don't know how uh, this, you know, how he came up with this is Tris Magistus. Mm. Um, this <laughs> this That's a game, complex game. It's a complex game. You use dice in so many different ways in this game. <laughs> it's just fast, fascinating. Um, and it's so crunchy, uh, and it looks very, it looks simple, but it is a deep, deep strategy game. It's like eating year old cereal without milk. <laughs> That's how crunchy. I like that. That's how crunchy uh, this is. <laughs> but for, for me, I, I like, I, it's kind of like, um, I survived the war and I learned from the war. Uh, when I played this game, like I, I'm glad that I played it because I got to experience what I a super something. <laughs> heavy, thinky game is like, and realized I don't want to ever have that experience again because <laughs> it was just so like I was putting so much of brain power <laughs> into this game, and I'm like I I don't want it was I was surviving wow. I wasn't thriving I was just surviving wow um, and it's like going into war you yeah, say it's, it's a brilliant game it's a brilliant game <laughs> everyone should enjoy going into yeah, war at yeah. least once you know you know you change I'm thinking you learn like, something about yourself you learn something about yourself and you take home. some wounds you got, I don't know why I just went to an <laughs> you get some thing. scars and <laughs> you come home and you say war is hell <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it um, <laughs> but no for me um yeah, I don't want to ever play that game again. Wow. The, the, the other two, which I mentioned this quickly, is uh, Paperback. Um, yeah. Paperback's a cool game. It's yeah. a cool uh, draft. It's a cool um, uh, uh, deck, deck builder building, right. with with words. And I love the artwork. I love the concept. I love everything about this game. But I just don't find it enjoyable. And I, I know it's a popular game. I would is reckon. It I would, yeah, really? I mean, it's it's one of those sort of niche popular games i think because it's a tim fowler game is hard well to get. that's a game where you have to like really Tally be good you. at linguistics vocabulary and piecing things together yeah. but you can a, play it cooperatively which is yeah. also cool you know but again i just i, I it just fell flat and i mm. ended up trading it and the last one is broom service another fister game whoa and two I, fister and games I on love, the list i love trick-taking games what? and this has a trick-taking element it has it's one of the most unique games you will play. Mm. And I loved this game for so long. And then it was like, okay, I've seen everything there is and I don't want to play this anymore. Like, I, I just don't. You know, I'd venture to anymore. say that this is some people's number one game. It's, it, yeah. And, and I mean, probably. And, and I would recommend this game to people just to, like to say, hey, you want to you play something different and unique? That one, I think the Spiel des Jahres. I could do. Try Broom Service. It's really neat. Um, but I, I have no desire to play this anymore. Yeah. And it just. It literally hit me one day, and I'm like, I'm trading the game. Wow. So those that are my passed. honorable moments, just like that. All right. I just know. So I have two to talk about. The first is a uh, social deduction game called The Resistance. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. same kind of thing of, like, being able to read people. Mm. But more importantly for me, the reason I don't like this is because even when I'm telling the truth, it sounds like I'm lying. Uh, you see, that, that, that And that's can, the thing. Yeah. Like, people are like, oh, you're obviously lying. And I'm like, oh, God, I hate that. Because, uh, like, I'm <laughs> telling the truth. Yeah. And no one wants to listen to me. And it's just so frustrating. Yeah. You got you to gotta love those bluffing games because to appreciate that. Yeah. you have to fight for yourself even when you know you're lying. And that doesn't really often mm. sit well with me. Mm -hmm. Just in general. Yeah. Yeah, I get um, it. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I don't like having to lie mm. and being in a position where I'm actively fooling people um, mm. and, and trying to make it look like I believe what I'm saying. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> but yeah, um, but on the flip side, I don't like it when I know I'm telling the truth and people still won't listen to me. Yeah, it's so yeah. frustrating. Either yeah. way, that game is frustrating. Yeah, and I love these games. So we so, we have some uh, yeah, trick taking in that as I love. Those are some of my tough ones for yeah. me. Uh, and then the other one. The reason I didn't make it on the list is because I haven't played it enough to be able to decide if I like it. Mm -hmm. And that is a, uh, a uh, On Mars. Oh, oh yeah, the Lacerda yeah. game. It's a Lacerda game. Yeah. And I have a ton of Lacerda games. Yeah, heavy game, yeah. And they're very heavy and they're really cool. I like the design, I like mm. the look of it. But the first play of it was very underwhelming for me. And mm. I don't know if it's because of who I was playing it with or 
you know, maybe just a long day of gaming up into that. And then my brain was fried and then mm. trying to learn and then play was just too much. Mm. Um, and so my caveat is I've only played it once and I just didn't enjoy it. Yeah. So I would like to try it again and yeah. I probably will enjoy it if I give it some more time. Mm. Um, yeah. But that's why it's not really on the list. But I'll throw it out there now and, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you'll change your mind in a few plays or, or yeah, not. something we'll like that. Yeah. Cool. I guess on to our number ones. On to number one. Number one. My number one game that is great, but I don't want to play it anymore, is Pandemic or Pandemic Legacy. Um, there's the crossover. Yeah, there's another crossover. I this The core design of this game, I think, is just so brilliant. I think what Matt Leacock did with the way that he um, arranged the cards to where you have to shuffle cards back in, you have to take cards from the bottom of the deck mm -hmm. so that you know you've never encountered those before. Uh, the way that the sort of the exponential nature of the way that the, the diseases and the outbreak works, I, I think that's such a brilliant dis a design decision and how he came up with it, I don't know. Um, and I think, I think it's fantastic and I think he's a great designer. Um, for me, I liked Pandemic when I played it. Um, it was new. It was a neat cooperative. But it got really samey to me mm -hmm. um, the more I played it, where it's kind of like, okay, I've solved this puzzle. Right. You know, I, every time I play the game, I know what I'm going to get, you know. Um, and like yep. you said, some sometimes, I mean, and this game has some really great highs and lows in it. So I, I, I yeah. kind of love that about it because, you know, you can win on one card or you can die on one card right at the end of the game. And that, that can, uh, you know, uh, generate some great feelings during the, the gameplay and great com camaraderie, but has some of the same problems you said with the quarterbacking. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I went into playing Pandemic Legacy, I played season one. Okay. And I played the whole, whole thing. Um, after like the fourth game, I was like, I don't want to play Pandemic anymore. Right. And, and they were even, I mean, they were, they're introducing, and it's a great game. Like I would literally write, if it, somebody's not played a Legacy game, I'd say, go get legacy season one like right. i really would recommend that um because it, it's a great game it's got great narrative it has great twists and turns um but what i realized too is ultimately it's still just pandemic but it's still pandemic and i'm like <laughs> i don't want to play like 15 games of pandemic right um and and i after that game i was just like i'm not even keeping it in my copy i'm not gonna keep yeah. my base game um i got rid of my base game even though it's great for new players I literally can't said even I look can't. At it anymore. I can't look at this game anymore. Um, Never want to look at it. Yeah. So I, I literally have no desire to play this game. I might try one of the really different variations at some point. Like I have played uh, Fall of Rome, and I thought that was a cool game because it, it really didn't feel like Pandemic to me. Mm. Um, and I'm interested in playing the um, uh, the Rising Tide version of the mm -hmm. game. That seems kind of neat. Right. But still. I just, I don't know. I, I'm just, I'm done with Pandemic, and yeah. I think it's great. I, I would highly recommend the game, and I would even rate it highly, but for me, it's, yeah. I, I'm, I'm done. Sorry, Matt. Don't want to play it. I, I, love, I love your designs, but Pandemic's not for me anymore. You know, you should take a look at uh, Commissioned. Have you played that? I have played that. Yeah, it's similar, yeah. It's but like, like reverse like Pandemic. Reversed, yeah. and uh, I felt like it has a stronger uh, combat against quarterbacking okay there's that die roll that happens that's right and depending on mm -hmm. what value you have you have um a restricted uh communication yeah i, I haven't played that enough to where I, I probably wouldn't turn commission down mm -hmm. um but uh but yeah it has it's, variable player powers yeah um it has the same types of actions but instead of taking things away you're putting things you're putting on things out. and then the, the bad stuff is like removing your your stuff yeah um yeah but I, I mean, think the biggest change... I'd, I'd give that another try, probably. Yeah, I mean, it's historically accurate. Um, it comes with a whole, like, um, a, addendum appendix, like, booklet about Explain where everything... Explain the actual... Yeah. And this is, like, this, the missionaries spreading sort of the gospel throughout different... Um, yeah. and, and getting missionaries and... and In the churches Mediterranean. And stuff. Yeah. It's very cool. Very yeah. well-made game. And, and very, very historically accurate right. in, in the way that it... Just is. doesn't get a lot of love or talk, yeah. um, mostly because since it's a religious theme, they mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately get... But automatically like, think it's bad <laughs> well not that it's yeah. bad it's like a lot of um like conventions and play showcases of gaming don't allow that oh okay. and they literally restrict them huh. from having a table there 
Oh, interesting. And they just, it's no, like think, I mean, it's an just, uphill battle yeah, of, of promotion. So that's weird. Yeah, weird. if you get a chance, you know, pick up commissioned. It's if you like pandemic but are game. looking for yeah. something different and probably better, mm. it's it's really good. Hmm. Yeah, good recommendation. So what is your number one? Okay. Is it gonna be a crossover? No, it's not. Okay, it's not. Um, so this and I hesitate to even say it because this is a list where we have to say it's a great game, but I don't like it. <laughs> it better not be sad. <laughs> For real this time. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of Blood Rage? <laughs> you, you, it, it's not Blood Rage. It's not Blood Rage. It's nothing like Blood said, Rage. I, I changed my number one to Nemesis. Right, I right, right. <laughs> okay. anything, anything I just asked you if you've realms, heard of it. I hate. No. I just, I'm, that's not my pick, though. No, so the re it's, it's not, I, I hesitate to say it's a great game, but I know so many people think it's great, and maybe it is. I just don't know. It's called Red Outpost. No, it's not Red Outpost. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. okay. I know okay. that a lot yeah. of people yeah. really like this game. Hmm. A lot of people, for them, this is amazing. Like, having the chance to, like, <laughs> not have your own workers, mm -hmm. but you move whatever's on the board that you think, you know, you're earning happiness with when you move them. It's got a lot of unique things to it. I was a big fan of the theme. Theme's awesome. Okay. It's theme like... awesome. Russia colonizing a planet and they want to, you know, set everything up according to their communistic uh, yeah, ideas. Utopian society. Right. Yeah. And uh, essentially it's a worker placement game where everyone shares the workers that are on the board mm -hmm. and no workers are ever removed. And when you move a guy, like if you put him to somewhere where he specializes, then he's happy to like do so. Like the farmer working on the farm. If yeah. you move the farmer somewhere else uh, to do a, a different action than that, then he, he gets less happy. And so these measurements are kind of how you end up scoring some points. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like the concept, I like the theme, I like the idea of this, but in practice, mm. wow, I hated this thing. Yeah, yeah, you played this at my house, because yes. I, I backed this on Kickstarter. He was very excited about this game. I, I was, I, you know, the, 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 even the art reminds you of uh, me of Scythe. It does, it really cool does. Too. It's like a yeah. little miniature Scythe yeah. art, art board, but mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. you know, the only caveat here is we didn't use the card the special, powers. Yeah, special powers. And I don't remember how it's implemented exactly, but maybe if I use the card powers, it'd be a different experience. Yeah. I think it'd be better. It might be yeah. better, but honestly, mm. I was so disappointed by how the flow of this game mm. works. Yeah, you, you de actually, of, uh, we played this three player, right? Yeah. I think it was three player. And, um, None of us came, it was underwhelming for all of us. You and the, our other friend really disliked it. Right. For me, it was kind of like, I, I, and I haven't played it since then. Um, I would like to try this again because it's simple enough. I, you know, I could play it with yeah. my family. I mean, I guess that's its one benefit mm. is it doesn't take too long to play. Yeah, it's really fast, actually. Right. A really quick game. Um, and, and it's interesting because it's so thematic, even in the phases of the game. Right. Like, there's theme It's all almost the like, to, like the theme is Takes so thematic from... it's a detriment yeah. to the gameplay uh, yes that's kind of where it fails it. i think you nailed it it's like great it, you did a thing that actually resembles what you're going for mm -hmm. but is that game good yeah that's where i feel like that question mm. wasn't really asked hard enough yeah yeah and, I, and i'm still on the fence because i, I want to try it with those special abilities i want to try it with four players just to see. And it's a difficult. Hmm. It's a difficult game for me to put on this list because I don't know if it's a good game. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can see that. Yeah, I'm not. I really sure. don't I'm, know. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if it is. I, I have a hard not. time separating yeah. if it's just my yeah. experience or opinion of it of that gameplay. Yeah. Or, you know, or really is it a really good game or really bad? I don't know. Yeah. It's so out there. It's so different, and I, I, I'm really curious. If you can comment on this video, uh, if you've played Red Outpost, mm -hmm. tell me what you like about it. Mm. Tell me why it's a good game. Yeah. Because I'm really not entirely sold that it's a great game. But I know it's a lot of a lot of people a really lot of do people like it. Really rate it this high, yeah. And I but agree, yeah. If you really rate it highly, why? For, why <laughs> first of all, yeah. But also think about do the the sunk cost fallacy okay if you're a backer yeah. and you spend a lot of money on this yeah the fallacy is i kind of have to like it yes. or i'm more inclined to like it because i spent a lot of money mm -hmm. or effort or time invested in it mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and not you're not able to separate that from the game itself yeah if you can sort of ignore that because i know it was basically just a kickstarter yeah like if you played your friend's copy <laughs> yeah have you played your friend's copy and you and walked you like away it? and you're like man that was awesome <laughs> That's the person I'm talking yeah, to, yeah, especially, yeah. especially. Yeah, yeah. But so if you can separate one that, person commenting yeah, ignoring that. that sunk cost fallacy, <laughs> tell me why this game is good, mm. because I I hesitate to say that it, it really is. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm surprised it made your list because, right. like you said, I, I thought you walked away thinking like it's a bad game. But uh, the fact that you're questioning, I think it's pre pretty interesting that you're questioning it because, yeah. like you said... Like, it sticks with you because it, it is it, so yeah, unique. It does. It does. It's um, like, it's a game you won't really forget soon. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that's a good pick for number one. So that's why it's my mm. number one. It's a lot mm. of controversy, even within my own mind. Mm. Um, and so hopefully that spurs some more conversation about it. And we'll come to the bottom of whether or not this is good yeah. or if I just don't like it. Yeah. Well, I had a good time uh, making this list up. I think it was, yeah, like, it was fun. Neat, neat to think about games in this way. And, uh, and hopefully you enjoyed it as well. I did. And, you know, as as an Omni gamer, as someone who like has a wide, uh, you know, appreciation for gaming, um, I, I enjoyed making this list because there's only so many games that I really don't like playing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's a much for me. harder thing to put together a list of games where I'm like, I really don't ever want to play that again. Yeah. Um, I, I just... The other the other side of this is making a list where you're hating on games right. is also not super fun necessarily. Yeah. Um, just because. Yeah, and I, and I would say like none of the games on my list I hate at all. Like, right. Like it's just it's yeah it's just like for me because because again I think I think they're all great actually. Um, I don't want people to get the wrong opinion yeah. or impression. Yeah. Of, of how I made these lists, you know, if I'm having to say, like, all these games are yeah. why I don't like it. Yeah. And I would never discourage, yeah, I, I think the same thing, like, I would, of all the games we listed, I would not discourage anyone from playing any of them. I wouldn't either. Ever, I wouldn't, and if somebody told me they played it and liked it, I would never knock it. I wouldn't even judge that yeah. at all, I, yeah. I would understand, um, because personal. They're, they're still great games, mm -hmm. they're just not for me. Yeah. And or for whatever reason, I didn't like or I won't play again. Mm. Um, but I don't fault you for liking it. I don't think, mm. you know, it's it's necessarily that these are bad games at yeah. all. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah. So it was a lot of fun putting this together. Yeah. You know, very and, fun. Um, very unique. Yeah. Hopefully you guys uh, like the lists and, uh, you know, keep keep uh, commenting with ideas for future lists. And yeah. we'll definitely consider those. So, well, for the Mentor Minutes as part of the YouTube channel Meeple Mentor, I've been Jared. And I've been Jay. I'll see you guys next time. Catch you next time. Bye. Bye.